and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering the League of Legends games that occurred this morning in the LCK. We had two matches, Damwon and T1, as well as HLE and Sandbox. Um, I will go over the key moments of each game, giving you a highlighted version of the game so you don't have to watch it for yourself. For instance, game one between Damwon and T1 went for 54 minutes. I mean, actually, longer than 54 minutes. The last notable thing happened at 54 minutes, which probably was 55 minutes. Um... And I'll go over that in like five minutes or less. So it'll save you about 50 minutes. I go oh, When I go over it, I note the time period of which the moment happened. So if you do want to say, hey, watch um, after a certain moment where, oh, the game's now close. Oh, there was a comeback. I'll start watching when the comeback happened. I'll tell you when it started so you'll be able to save yourself some time. Um, so let's get started. Damwon and T1, a very hyped series. This is... Two world contenders. Um, Damwon looks like they are back to the Damwon we thought they would be when the season started. And T1, T1 looked good like we've seen them all year. They stayed undefeated. So the three-game series was uh, quite quite a series, as you can see by the scores here. Uh, Gumiushi ends up being the MVP, and I'll get to why. When the, when the uh, recap's over, you will know why Gumiushi was the MVP. Um, Game one, very slow game. Only um, 13 kills through the first 45 minutes. First kill happened at 6 minutes. The dam on uh, bot lane got up 1-0, turned into a mountain. Um, eventually, they take an Infernal Soul in this game. Damwon would go bot again, so they try to emphasize bot lane early. Uh, T1 would go mid lane to try and get Faker ahead, which turned into an ocean. The back and forth continued when T1 would take the Rift Herald, winning a team fight 1-0. Um, Damwon responded by taking the Infernal. So once again, the teams are alternating objectives. Um, so 20 minutes in, Damwon are up 3-2, but T1 has a slight gold lead. Um, it was the, t the it was Zeus's well not Zeus Zeus's um, advantage in the Jace um, Graves matchup versus. The um, Damwon bot lane being so far ahead of the T1 bot lane due to Damwon going down there twice in the early game. So we had our matchup here. We knew it was going to be Zayas versus the Damwon bot lane. Um, T1 would take an Inferno. Damwon would get a pick and take a Baron at 23 minutes and also use that to go to Soul Point. However, they couldn't do anything with it. Um, after the power play was over, they were up 4-2 to two in kills, but the gold wasn't really in their favor too much. Um, T1 would win a team fight 2-0 in mid lane at 33 minutes. Zayas with a double kill, which got them to soul point. So now we're 35 minutes in. Both teams are at soul point. Kills are close. T1 would take a Baron at 37 minutes. Damwon would end up responding right after that, getting a kill. Zeus, um, not Zayas, sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. Um, Damwon would get a kill afterwards. So T1 only had a 2K power play, and during that um, window, Damwon were able to take the Infernal Soul uncontested. <coughs> Excuse me. Take the Infernal Soul uncontested. 42 minutes, Damwon would win a fight 2-0 to be able to take the Baron. Um, T1 would be able to take one of the Damwon players out afterwards. So we're 45 minutes in after this Baron is done, and once again, they didn't do anything with the Baron. So Damwon had two Barons they couldn't do anything with. Um, they were up 7-6, to six, but the gold was tied. They won the fight for the Elder at 47 minutes, 2-1, to one, which turned into another Baron, which they finally were able to do something with. Um, they tried to push for end at 50 minutes, which failed. Um, T1 were able to stop it with a 1-0 to make them have to push back and reset, which allowed T1 one last chance, and there was a fight around the Elder, second Elder at 54 minutes. Uh, Damwon would come out on top in that fight, 5-1. to one. Um, Birdall and Showmaker both with double kills. And then the game, final score, 14-9. to nine. So the game was very close all the way till the end. Damwon had a slight gold lead, but by 54 minutes, a 4K gold lead is not much at all. Um, I believe Damwon had over 100,000 gold when the game was done. Ridiculous. Um, but this is the kind of series we, we were expecting out of two teams that are very evenly matched, arguably maybe two of the top five teams in the world right now. Um, it was a good, it was a good series. Game two, and I talk about this a lot in the LPL when it comes to these three game series, specifically talking about game two. 
I feel like the winning team in Game 1 has such a letdown in Game 2. And Damwon ended up letting us down in Game 2 big time. As you can see, the score was 19-5. to Excuse me. Uh, T1 would open up the game by going mid lane, getting uh, Faker ahead. Go up in gold almost 2k by 10 minutes. Uh, they would turn that into a Hextech Drake. Eventually, they take the Cloud Soul in this game. I mean, this is just going to be T1 running over Damwon. Um, they win a team fight in mid 2-0 at 15 minutes. Turn that into an Infernal. 19 minutes, they win another team fight in mid. We're at 20 minutes now. T1 are already up 4k, and Faker is 3-1-1. One, one. I mean, they're rolling. Uh, they win a team fight for the Baron at 20 minutes, pretty much on spawn, 4-2. to two. Zayas with a double kill, pushes their lead to 6k to start. Go to Cloud Soul Point during the Baron. Baron ends, T1 are up 11-3, to three, 8k gold, Faker is 4-1-5. and five. Um, T1 would try and end during this Baron, shortly after this Baron expired at 26 minutes. Damwon did make a stand 1-1, one one, so they are able to push them back, make them reset. And it took another five minutes for T1 to end. They ended up taking another Baron, winning a team fight 3-1. Gumi Ushu with a double kill during that Baron to push their gold lead to 10k. Um, instead of ending, T1 decided to reset, take the Cloud Soul, finally end the game on a Gumi Ushu quadra kill at 30 minutes. Um, Gumi Ushu is a very big player in game two, obviously. I mean, having multiple um, kills in the final two fights, a quadra kill in the last fight. He was very dominant on the um, Aphelios in Game 2. Uh, game 3 was what we ex expected. Um, I mean, more of what we expected out of this series. Um, back and forth. Actually, Damwon opened up this game pretty damn, um, no pun intended, but they really punched T1 in the mouth to start this game. Canyon solo killed Owner at 2 minutes. Showmaker solo killed Faker at 5 minutes. Um... So early on, the Damwon players are just outright outlaning their opponents. In the 1v1, in a vacuum, um, they're getting ahead. T1 would go bot lane at 9 minutes, Faker with a double kill. During that time, Birdall solo kills Zayas. So in three rolls, the Damwon players have just killed the opposition in a vacuum. Um, T1 take a cloud on the other side. Um, Damwon go top lane to keep Birdall ahead. T, there'd be a fight in mid at 10 minutes where T1 won 2 0. So 15 minutes to kind of take notes here. Um, Canyon, I mean, <clears throat> I'll get to Canyon, but <coughs> Damwon's up 5 to 4. And Canyon and Gumiushi are both up 2K golds within their own matchups. I haven't mentioned Gumiushi much here, but he played a role in those two kills in bot lane and played a role in other areas around the rift. So now he's up 2k gold, Canyon's up 2k gold. So similar to how game one was Zayas versus the bot lane of T1, it is now, I mean Zayas versus the bot lane of DK. This game it is Canyon versus Gumiushi. T1 take an Infernal at uh, 18 minutes, Birdall solo kills Zayas again. So Birdall is just smoking Zayas in the Aurelia Jace matchup. So Damwon are up 7 to 5, 2k gold, Canyon is 3 0 and 1 at 20 minutes. 21 minutes, Damwon would go bot lane to get a kill, turn that into a hex tech. That turned into a Baron and a 4k power play. I mean, the way that rolled off the tongue, it was kind of snowballing in Damwon's favor. 24 minutes, the game ended up turning. T1 would ace Damwon in their own base as Damwon were trying to end with the Baron. Um, Zayas and Kumiushi, both with double kills, massive double kills to turn the game around in an instant where Damwon could have ended. Um, so now it is two and a half K gold for Damwon. They're up 11 to 10 at 25 minutes. They take a hex tech, um, 30 minutes. Um, this is where the game des was decided at 30 minutes, pretty much T1 win a Baron fight, acing Damwon Faker with a double kill. They go to soul point during that time of having the Baron power play. And at 37, 33 minutes. Um, T1 end in bot lane 5 to 2, Gumiushi with a double kill. So, really, that fight at 24 minutes where T1 aced Damwon as Damwon were pushing down mid lane and pushing down bot lane to end the game, um, that was massive. That was what decided the game. That is what decided this game. Um, very close series. I don't really think I would drop Damwon out of my top three. I mean, this was very, very close. It could have been anybody's series. Out of game, I mean, game two was a, was a real blowout, but. Damwon were able to eke out game one and 
T1 were able to eke out Game 2, a very evenly matched series. Uh, game, two, game 2 in Series 2, it wasn't as even. Um, I mean, wasn't as entertaining to, and, and inspiring to watch. I mean, I didn't really look at it and say, damn, I really... Let's follow up Dam 1 and T1 with HLE and Sandbox. Not so much. But nevertheless, let's go over it. Uh, there is a one-to-one -one fight in River over the first Drake in this fight in this game at seven minutes. Nine minutes, there's a fight at Rift Herald where Sandbox got it, winning 1-0. HLE would take an ocean on the other side of the Rift. Then win a fight 1-0 in River afterwards. Sandbox would respond with a kill of their own in bot lane in a 3v3. At 16 minutes, there's a fight over an Infernal Drake where it went one to one, but Sandbox got the Drake. Um, HLE would then take the Rift, the second Rift Herald, and Sandbox would get a kill off of that. So at 20 minutes, Sandbox were up five to three, uh, one and a half k gold, and Ice was two zero and two on Aphelios. So right now, um, actually, sorry, he's on Jinx. I swapped them. Um, Ice is carrying them right now. 21 minutes, uh, HLE would take a mountain, in which case they won the fight 2-0 afterwards, turning that into a Baron because now they have an advantage. We'll go straight to Baron. They took the Baron. Um, 25 minutes, HLE are up 4K now because they were able to take that Baron. Kills are tied 6-6. HLE would eventually go and take the Mountain Soul in this game. The next time they actually the fight, they really decided this game happened at 26 minutes when HLE decided to go to Soul Point. There was a fight where they aced them 5 to 1 on Fleek with a triple kill on Lee Sin. Led to that Mountain Soul point. Um, HLE would then follow that up with two more kills in bot lane a few minutes later. Take a Baron. Go up 7.5k gold. 30 minutes. HLE are now up 13 to 7. And on Fleek is 5, -0, 5 1 and 4. They take a Mountain Soul uncontested. And then they go and win the game through. Um, I mean, they just. Through sheer force. They only needed two kills to uh, end it, 15 to 7. On Fleek was a very big player in this game. He ends up being my MVP in this series. I had a tough time picking uh, between On Fleek and. Shoot, who was it that I almost picked? Uh, I don't remember. I almost didn't pick On Fleek. I think it'll come to me in game two. Samdi. I considered Samdi, but. Uh, Samdi uh, didn't do as much as On Fleek, I felt like. I mean, he had a lot of kills and a lot of gold, but On Fleek was getting the kicks when he needed to on Lee Sin and doing what he had to do on Xin Zhao in Game 2, which I'll get to. So, Game 2, HLE go mid lane to start, get a kill. Sandbox go bot lane to get a kill. Six minutes, Karis is able to double down on the fact that HLE went mid lane, getting a solo kill on Closer, putting him out of his misery, um, leading to a cloud. At, at 11 minutes, HLE would win a fight 3-1. Samdi with a double kill. That led to a uh, Hextech Drake. 15 minutes in, HLE are up 5-2, 2k gold. 16 minutes, they take a, a Rift Herald. Sandbox are able to win the fight afterwards 2-0, despite them getting the Rift Herald. 19 minutes, this game was decided now when um, there was a fight in Topside Jungle because HLE were dropping the Rift, um, trying to take the tower. It went 5-2 to two in favor of HLE, that ace. Samdi with another double kill. Now he's really rolling on Aphelios. I mean, Jinx. Jeez, I keep swapping him. Jinx. Um, HLE go to Ocean Soul Point afterwards before 20 minutes. They're up 5k gold. They take... One second. Sorry about that. So, to end this out, pretty much, HLE are up 5k gold at 20 minutes. They're really rolling. They take the Baron at 23 minutes after winning a fight 3-0. They're up 7k. And then they end off of that Baron through bot lane. Samdi with a triple kill. Final score 17 to 9. Um, I didn't mention on Fleek specifically in here because he didn't have like multiple kills anywhere. But his um, kill participation was really high. It was higher than Samdi's for most of this game. And also, at the end of the game, actually, he was able to get a bounty on himself because he was so far ahead of his opponent. Despite him not like having a very like in any fight being outwardly oppressive on the, you know scoreboard so he's the mvp for me for that series obviously like i said this series was not what you probably came here for you came here for the first one um i mean these two teams are both two and four 
they're definitely in that bottom half of the um, LCK right now. And these two are clearly the cream of the crop in the whole world, in my opinion. I mean, Dan One and T1, like I said, I think they're top five in, in the world right now. I After watching the LEC and LCS this past weekend, I, I struggle to put Rogue in the top five, and they're maybe the only team that even could like remotely come close right now. Um, because Liquid, I mean, Liquid doesn't have a full roster. Cloud9 doesn't have a full roster. So what is EG actually like against a full roster? We don't know. So what do you do? Like, there's EDG, and then there's probably, I mean, other um, LPL teams that could be in the top five, and then these two in Gen G. So I'm done rambling. My second half of my video will be out later where I cover the LCS lock-in finals between the Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid. Stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Every day I do put out content, whether it is games that occurred in the morning. Um, this whole week there will not be LPL or LCK games. So the next time you'll see a LCK video will be the week after. Um, so 10 days. LPL will be 11 days, I believe. Um, but I'll have power rankings out every day in all four major regions. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for more content.